Daddy. Sorry, I mean like Daddy Saul. Like Daddy, uh, what's his name? Miguel. <laughs> Sorry, I am paying attention, I swear. Or oh, Mike? What's it gonna be? Cotton bollocks? No, for Matty! Ah! Oh! Damn, okay. We are revisiting. Interesting. You me to talk. I talked. <laughs> oh no. Are we up? We're not okay. No, fair enough. Hello and welcome to another Better Call Saul Sunday. Today, episode 4 of season 4, mate. It is talk and we shall see what we're talking about, buddy. Get your flamingos, that's right, it's a flamingo check. Go! That's right, and let's go. Westworld? What a crossover, mate. Oh, it's Westwood. Sorry. Hey, I tell you what, we are not on it today. <laughs> Hello, the Red Room. We shall not talk about what goes on in there, mate. It's nice, isn't it? We've watched this guy walk all the way in. And again, I just, I'm watching it and I'm reminded of any other show, film, whatever it might be. You would see him coming in, would Skippy be there? And it is just, again, these, these small touches that just force you almost as the audience to sit, relax, be patient. And I think you have to kind of go along with that. I, I know when I was uh, about to embark on this show, a lot of people were talking about, oh, it's, a, it's different, you know, you've got to be patient. It's a slow burn and, you know, all, all the stuff that people tend to say when they're prepping someone for Better Call Saul. I've seen the comments of people being like, ah, I don't like it for that. I don't like, and, you know, which is fair enough. I think that's absolutely valid. I think to a certain extent, you do have to kind of go along with it, be able to get yourself into that space where it's like, okay, we're patient, we're relaxed, and we're just gonna watch it unfold. And it's moments like that that kind of force you almost to do that, to slip into that, allow you to slip into that. And I think if you rail against that, you're probably not gonna have as good a time, right? How is this relevant? I recognize none of these folks. Is it gonna be like a outline faction? Uh, okay. Done. They're gonna frame those guys for what happened to Nacho and crew. Hi, it's Robbie Finn from CC Mobile. Am I calling in bad time? What time is it? It kind of feels like a bad time, dude. I'd like to offer you a position at our uptown branch. Ah. Oh, this is the cell phone store? <laughs> you lost track. That's fair. Hey, when you're looking for a job, man, honestly, I don't know who's calling. Do you know what I mean? It's like, which one are you? He's talking about starting off as a shift supervisor. Nice. Oh, today, so, mm. I don't want to be, do you know what I mean? I don't want to be waking up. And like, it's good news, it is good news, it is, it is. It should be, do you know what I mean? But phew. but I'm going to sleep under the impression tomorrow I'm not going to go to work. And then I get a call being like, yeah, you got the job. Coming today. No, <clears throat> no, no, thank you. Absolutely not. You've not prepped me at all, mate. I need at least 24 hours. I'm sorry. Uh, my plans have changed. I understand that impulse. Just, I'm not going to be able to take that job. Oh, just straight up. It's a real shame. Doesn't quite know what he's looking for, does he? Still in a, a period of transition from him losing his law license, right? That seems like ages ago now, but it, pff, hey. Still not quite got out of that and into something else. See Chuck dying. A little bit of hiccup in that transition too. Hey, you want Thai for dinner? Oh, hello. Can you ask my permission first? You know what I mean? Like consent. Consent's important. The answer's yes. But do you know what I mean? Ask me first. Maybe you should talk to someone. Sure. <sighs> yeah, I got a name. And he's not okay. This is the thing. Because like we have seen that he's not okay. As much as he is kind of putting on a front of like... I'm not that bothered. Having said that, because I think obviously at uh, the end of the last episode in the letter, and he was very much unbothered by it. I, I do, I do to a certain extent think that that was genuine. My immediate thoughts were, this is going to hit him somewhere down the line. I don't know. I honestly don't know if it will. I think perhaps in his own brain, in, in his own psyche, he's accepted what Chuck thought of him. And the last face-to-face -face conversation, I think, is stronger than the letter. I, I don't know. I, I do think there's room there for him to have the letter perhaps be something let down the line as a bomb of, of something perhaps uh, an avenue that he can use to find a way to like Chuck a little bit think maybe a little bit f fondly of Chuck I don't know but sorry sorry this is this is because this is the question it's the question is he okay and I know he's not but I don't know necessarily that it's because I don't think it's because of the letter and I'm not even convinced it's entirely because Chuck has died I think that's obviously absolutely affecting him that's a factor but I think the main thing is the and again I'm repeating a little bit but the main thing that I think is the matter with Jimmy right now and, and what's bothering the, him the most is this idea of unfinished business. 
that I've kind of spoken about a little bit this season and not getting a resolution and knowing that he'll never get a resolution as well and how that's shaping his emotions right now. And I think that's where him not being okay is coming from. And I think when I say we know he's not okay, we've seen that. What I'm talking about is obviously him lashing out at people, the job interviewers and, and all that stuff and manipulating people, scamming people, insulting people. I think that's where that's coming from. So it's really interesting what I do feel like he's actually bothered by. And it's like, I do think the unfinished business is actually something that he's bothered by more than actually Chuck's death. Because I think, again, Chuck's death is this thing of like, I don't think he quite knows how to feel about that. And I think as well as obviously the sadness, there is a, an, an element of... <sighs> It's over. Good. That was painful and not nice. So I think that honestly is lesser to the, the unfinished business. And then I think the letter honestly is somewhere in this little limbo below even that, that maybe he'll feel something for later down the line. Right now, I think there's too much going on. I don't think he, he, he does. But anyway, sorry, not necessarily any reason to actually go into this because he's not okay. Right. I think we can say that for, for sure. And, I, and she's right. And he needs to talk to somebody. Is he in a place to do that? We'll see. It's a shrink. Yeah, well, thank you. Just, uh, have to, uh... I don't think he's going yet. To check out my schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she knows it as well. <laughs> I almost forgot to tell you. I got a job. Really? Lying to her as well. Deflecting. Mobile communications specialist. I'm a shift supervisor, even. Hmm. Not great, is it? Now he's turning to his private life and scamming, or almost lying, you know, sw manipulating. Kim, maybe that's where that goes, right? Maybe it gets to a place where uh, I feel like she's going to find out and that puts her on the outside. Up until this point, they've kind of been in this together. Do you know what I mean? Like she knows what Jimmy's like and she accepts that about him, which is beautiful, great. But I think a, a large part of that is that she feels like they're in it together. She's in. She's on the inside of that, and the scamming and the manipulating and the slipping Jimmy is 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 the is outside. This what he's doing right now is kind of a little step into excluding her from that inner circle of she's no longer protected from experiencing and being a victim of slipping Jimmy. Right? She's not on the inside anymore. She's on the outside, and does and what that does is it separates them. Do you know what I mean? So 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 I wonder whether there's an element of this that maybe splits them up let down the line maybe that's where that kind of comes from coffee's on coffee beautiful thank you kim thank you let me know listen i've been thinking it over and i just can't pass up this effort oh okay if the position is still open i was gonna say no <sighs> oh, no, okay 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 good no forget what i said we'll reconvene in 30 days for a proper pre-trial conference shall we oh i like him oh sorry chipper seven six State versus... Okay, who is this? Miss Wexler, do you have a matter before the court today? Just observing. Why? I'm Scotty Blakey. Scotty Blakey? No, you can't have two Y's, buddy. Sorry, no, I'm not a fan. Not a fan of that, mate. Scott Blakey or Scotty Blake? That's it. Those are your options, my friend. Let's not take the pick. Judge Munson, you would like to see you in chambers at the next recess. Help me take my mind off this eggplant in Oak Ridge. That sounds nice, mate. What's... My wife insists you know, cholesterol, yada yada. What she added to it though? What she spiced it with? Do you know what I mean? That, that, that's the flavor. That's where the flavor comes from, buddy. More information, please. I don't think we're getting it. What are we here for, mate? I heard about a case, and I think you might be the right person for it. Okay. There's a young woman pregnant with her first child. She develops a complication. There's a mistake with the anesthesia. Oh no. She aspirates vomitus into her oxygen mask. The baby is delivered. Fine. Okay. With a mum. Serious brain damage. Damn. She's left comatose. The hospital refuses to take responsibility. Of course. This is the plot of the verdict. Of course it is. Oh. Hey. What I got coming up next? I got a janitor who threw his pee on his boss. <laughs> Why? One after that, she stabbed her boyfriend over a grilled cheese sandwich. Whoa. You won't find any save the broken lawyer cases in it. Don't think that you are the first to try to rediscover their love of the law by trolling my court. Okay. Best thing you can do is stick to Mesa Verde. Next time I see you lurking in my court, I'm going to put you to work. She's allowed to observe to... Okay, I don't like this guy anymore. Good luck to you. Jeez, what a stickler. Interesting though. I mean, if his theory is true, the thing of uh, she's trying to reignite her love for it, that would track for me if that's the case, if that's why she was observing. Because again, I, I couldn't really, I was trying to think, I was like, why Why is she there? Why is she observing? What's the purpose of that? And, and I, I came up with nothing. So like I say, it would track. I think she is getting a little disillusioned with the job. So curious, we'll see. We'll keep an eye. You wanted to discuss the conflict of interest. We haven't seen who's there, Kim. Uh, <laughs> Get wrecked. Love a little rebellion. 
talk yeah the episode name is talk we open with mike talking to the group you know saying whatever he said maddie i guess something to do with that then we go to jimmy and uh you know kim is like call the number maybe you need to talk to somebody we're getting that you know kim is going through her own thing perhaps of she needs to talk right maybe she quite doesn't quite realize that but she's also not opened up about where she's at with jimmy not not with jimmy but to jimmy she's not opened up to jimmy in regard to what's going on with her and i can imagine that from her perspective it's like oh he's going through a lot right now it's probably it's not the right time but it's like mate we gotta come on we gotta talk we gotta talk i get it but it's important and i think yeah these three characters right now they all are going through something they all have trauma they're all encountering crises of identity in certain ways common theme threading through this episode so far i wonder if we'll get any uh, conclusions or developments perhaps in regard to that by the end sorry i'm late mm. hello a date a girlfriend of mine is playing piano with her band tonight oh yeah. they're pretty good yeah want to come you want to go beautiful i told stacy i'd be there another night maybe i could stop by after yeah that'd be great good live a little buddy i've been thinking about reaching out to henry that dead wife he's always talking about never existed Whoa. What are you talking about? For real? It's an act. Have you looked up on everybody? The guy's story changes every time he tells it. Okay. The romantic night at the Cubs game, their first kiss. <laughs> Wrigley Field didn't get lights until 88. There were no night games before then. Buddy, you know too much. <laughs> Who am I kidding? He knows He knows exactly what he should. Why would anyone make up a story like that? Attention. Needs uh, some level of, I don't know, stimulation, connection. And can I find it that way? Is the only way that works for him? It's not healthy, but... You have a very suspicious nature. He does, but I think it serves him well. He's got to tell. Ah, oh, mate. Like a bad poker player when he's lying. Right, I was about to say, I want to see Mike play poker. I want to see how he does. You know what I mean? I bet he, oh my goodness. How many casinos do you think he's banned from? That's my question. You want to put your money where your mouth is? Yes. Gonna come to group tonight? Kind of got to now. All right. <laughs> You're on. Nice. Oh, I like her. She's cool. I feel like he's going to tank this job somehow. On purpose, maybe? Maybe he's going to lose control, lash out. Feels like the kind of space he's in. Doesn't quite know what he wants from life right now, does he? He's um, flailing a little bit in the wind. Because I see this and I'm like, he's not having a good time. He's not going to last here. This is some, somehow this is going to end. Well, no. Tyler Hardware, mate. We don't talk about that, yeah? All right. Significant. That's all I'll say. But yeah, actually, it's little, little... Yeah, no one's coming at all, huh? The store's always been a bit calmer. Just bring a book. Perfect. Mate. Oh, hire me. Any chance that you could move me to a store with a little more traffic? This is the thing. Give me a paycheck and say that I can essentially read all day. Keep up the good work. Yeah, see you then. Mate, this is a great deal. Pick up the paycheck. Keep yourself busy. Gonna lob it through the window. Okay. Right, yeah. They needed a patsy. Oh, are they just gonna go in? They're gonna take care of this now? Dude, don't say a word. If they're gonna do it by themselves, you stay in the car. Amigos! See, let them work. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Wow. Okay, fair. I, I'm a little impressed. Don't care at all, do they? <laughs> yeah, really caught in the middle, isn't he? He's not in a good situation. Mate, stay down. <sighs> this is the thing as well, though. You don't want to get on the bad side of these twins, do you? If they come in from behind and they know that he did nothing. Ooh. Yeah, Nacho is well beat up, isn't he? Ooh, dude. <laughs> Jesus, where were you? <laughs> okay, cool. We've got his respect. Cause, I mean, at the moment, Nacho's survival kind of depends on how well he plays both sides. Though if these boys ever find out that he's pff, working for Gus, he is screwed. 
it's interesting the theme is talk everyone's got to talk everyone's got their problems everyone needs to kind of uh, stuff out a little bit nacho no exception but how does that help him <laughs> you know there we go though yeah gus and his plan tied up neatly with a bow nacho's his man now it's territory isn't it yep salamancas wipe out the espinosos mm -hmm. the cartel can't give it to the salamancas so they give it to him i think they give it to you yeah <sighs> Mate, accept it. Can't say anything. It's a service to the people. Oh, here we go. Whoops. Sorry. What? Nine nine. It's called the North Fork. Slash Sean. Mate, this guy's just at every show that I watch nowadays, I swear. Today I, I got up and I took a shower. Well done, mate. Fair play to you. And then I realized it. I hadn't thought about Maddie all morning. Not once. And you're going to feel awful about it, and I feel like you do. And she's beating herself up, but that's good. That's progress. You shouldn't beat yourself up. I get the natural inclination to do that. I'm not saying that I'm exempt. I would probably do the same thing in her position, but you know, from outside of the situation, good. You can't linger as awful as it might sound. And you know, he's always gonna be there. You're always gonna remember him fondly and miss him, right? You're always gonna hold that, but you can't live your life pining for someone, missing someone, heart aching every hour, every minute of the day for that person. You can't, cause they're not coming back. And that is harsh and cold, but that's the truth. And to get through a morning, not think about him once, that is healing. That is where you need to be. And it doesn't mean that you're forsaking the person. It just means that you are finding your way back to a little bit of life without that pain being so debilitating, which should be the goal. And if I can go hours, then why not a whole day? Mm -hmm. I mean, what if I lose the sound of his voice? What if I forget him completely? I get valid fears. I get it. It might be painful, but if, if you ask me, I'd say it's yep. progress. I agree. I feel like Mike's going to rail against it a little bit. In this room, I've felt the same things you're talking about. I know I have. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's going to lash out of this guy because he's lying. Keep trying to get there, you know, to live in the here and now. I wonder if Mike's wrong, you know, this whole bet thing. I wonder if he's wrong because I have a feeling because he's, he, this guy here and he's lying. I guess up until that point, it's been pretty passive, not really been harming, but he's just linked it from Stacy's pain in regard to Matty that she, you know what I mean? And he's drawing a line between Stacy and Matty. Very personal things to Mike. And I don't know if Mike's going to take that very well. And actually, it would kind of make it very interesting if actually this guy isn't lying and Mike was wrong. It would just make it more interesting. And it would be like a beautiful, because everything that's happening right now, it's beautiful it's human it's hard and it's painful but it's raw and it's honest and this is how people feel this is this is what happens when people die and the the the, the path forward is everything that Stacy's dealing with right now right this guy at work I've been avoiding him for the last two weeks yeah anger uh, she always wanted to go to Sydney but mm. oh, right yeah Mike, you have something you want? Here we go. Here we go. You don't want to hear what I have to say. Yeah, because he would have been fine. But it was the fact that he linked it to Stacey and Matty. Just triggered Mike. Understandably so. You I know. wonder if this guy here is lying. But whether he's like putting up a wall, right? Maybe, maybe he's been truthful, but not quite truthful. Maybe the things that he's talking about happened to someone close to him, but it wasn't a wife. It wasn't, do you know what I mean? Uh, maybe there's like a kernel of truth to it. And the reason that he's lying about it is to almost distance himself from it, to make it easier to talk about because he's not talking about it. Do you know what I mean? It's less raw. He's less kind of scraping at the rawness, the, the truth, the honesty of the situation. And he's putting like a barrier above that rawness of like, no, 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 I'm not going to touch that, but I can touch it in this way. If I lie about perhaps the details, but generally I'm telling the truth, that's a way that I can talk about it. Cause that's also very valid. That's also something that I think is fair to do, but it would also perhaps make him feel uncomfortable or like he's lying to them. Cause he is also, that would also be him lying to them. Do you know what I mean? Like that would be true. I kind of hope that happens. I hope that's what this guy is. I hope that's what his character is doing here. And it would be really interesting if now Mike lashes out at him with the information we have, it would be understandable. And then to learn Learn, actually you're right I was lying it's not my wife but it happened to this person and and it's just the way that I deal with it and I'm, and I'm talking and, and allows me to talk about it because I mean hey the episode's called talk and I think bringing to the forefront this idea that it's it's hard to talk about this stuff and methods that get around that let's say that that is a method that this guy's using to be able to talk I'd say that's fair I think the important thing in that situation that scenario is that he talks maybe not everything's 100 
100% true. But if he still lost somebody, if he lost them to whatever he's told people that Judy died from, I just think that message of as long as you talk, doesn't matter how you get there, doesn't matter what method you use, as long as you talk, as long as you're processing, trying to process this, stuff that's the important thing and I, and I really hope they go that way i feel them teeing that up i'm not sure if they're gonna do it this guy was never married right you know the rules Yo, i know your rules that's just not true go on then she wanted to go to australia last month it was cuba if he's making up stories like different stories every time i do feel like that's almost more credence to the fact that he's just repackaging his truth in in lies to make it easier to talk about I, <laughs> Still think there could be more to this. Because if what I'm saying is true, he would run out. Do you know what I mean? Like you would do that for a reason. There's, there's, there's a reason that you'll be lying. There's a reason that you're not telling the full truth. And in that moment, he has been forced by Mike to tell the full truth that he's not ready for. We know that if that, sorry, again, I, I'm, I'm assuming I'm right. If that is how it is, Mike's trying to force him there to do something he's clearly not ready for. So I think we're still on the table for what I'm talking about. I just think it would be so much more interesting if that would be the case, what I'm talking about. He knew you wouldn't notice. Maybe I'm wrong. All wrapped up in your sad little stories, feeding off each other's misery. I mean, he's lashing out, he's, he's in pain, right? You wanted me to talk, I talked. Ah, uh, okay, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, I, hey, everything that Mike's doing is forgivable because he's, he's just in pain from the thing that he's had to deal with, the trauma he's, he's having to deal with. And it's like, even if what I'm saying is true, and he is wrong, I still wouldn't blame Mike for that. It's just, it's all difficult. It's all different shades of difficult, right? None of it's easy. And I think getting into the nitty gritty of like, who's in the right, who's in the wrong, doesn't matter. You're all suffering. You've all got something you're dealing with. If you lash out here or there, you'll get angry. You, you, you know, take it out on someone else. I, I get it. I get it. And I, and, I, and I don't blame Mike for it. I just, as a writer right now, I would be feeling like I'd, I'd want to do a little bit more with that scene with, with, with the guy who is lying. I just, think there should be more to that and again the episode is called talk i think from what i can see the, the 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 theme that the episode is going with it will be more powerful and will drive that point home if the guy who's lying isn't lying <laughs> I mean, it's Nacho, right? Yeah. I mean, again, episode's called Talk. And what I was going to say before, like, of, of, of Nacho needs to talk as well, I did nearly say, I was like, the only person that he could possibly feasibly talk to is his father. And I should have said it because we're here now, right? The episode's doing it. But uh, yeah, absolutely. And they need to talk. This one. Still checking all the factories then, eh? Fernandez and Sullivan, top guys. Okay. <laughs> What's gonna be wrong with it? What's that say? It's not a guessing game. 38 degrees? <laughs> Should be 35. We'll fix that. Oof. Buddy, gotta get your house in order. He wants to see you. Yeah? Mike's in a very volatile place right now, emotionally too. We're seeing here, I mean, look, he is just being himself, right? This is kind of Mike, but he is being very harsh in the way he's delivering it all. Yeah, don't even blame Jimmy for this, to be honest. Like, fair play, man, if no one's coming in. Is that the gun guy? I'm a fancy guy myself. Mate, same, well done. This is uh, more than we talked about. Bidding war. We both know you could have kept most of this. Ah, huh, nice. You could have left me high and dry. Hey, loyalty, we like it. Got any more where that came from? Beautiful. You never know who's listening. Okay. Hmm, fair enough. Man, all I see is that Jimmy's just, he's making a YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> he's getting people to click, man. Do you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta grab him. Gotta grab him, get him in. Get him through the door. Oh, I bet, he, I bet he'd kill on YouTube, man. I swear. Yeah, what's this about? Is Gus not happy? I wonder. In order for our arrangement to continue, there is a matter we need to discuss. Almost like you need to talk about it. Nacho Varga. And all the while, you knew Varga was moving against my interests. Mm. You gonna make a move, you better make it. <laughs> you brought me here because you haven't asked. So why don't you stop running a game on me and just tell me about the job? <laughs> nice, yeah. I mean, look, I don't think you can really play Mike anyway, but I think in... Oh, we're finished. That's it. My bad. Cool. What's the job? Interesting. Yeah, that was talk. Interesting. Yeah. And not really super surprising, you know, very tight thematically, I think, this episode, the whole talk thing. But yeah, not surprising that we didn't perhaps get many big 
revelations in regard to that or, or, or much progress I suppose in regards to that kind of almost just demonstrating that these people aren't doing okay and they need to talk but uh all very important stuff right and I think this is the what I kind of caught myself uh, thinking about this episode is season four very slow I mean I think the show generally is quite slow as it is but I think season four especially so so far which not necessarily a bad thing and that's not me bringing it up to be like I'm not enjoying it do you know what I mean more at the moment an observation because I'm in this place where I mean at the beginning of the episode I was talking about you know these long moments that kind of force you to be patient and and the show kind of demands that I don't think it's really an accident that I was kind of talking about this episode because I think that the episodes that we've got so far in season four very slow dealing with uh, subtle emotions emotions under the surface right which don't necessarily rear themselves in big moments or, or beats not to say that those haven't been happening too I mean we're, I'm thinking about Kim and Howard in regard to, to the letter and getting given the letter and obviously what happened what Howard did after the funeral in regard to Jimmy and, and, and how that went with, with Kim and him we also had obviously the letter last episode there are still big things happening but I think in the in a general sense it is just a little bit slower a little bit more subtle not a bad thing but it'll be interesting to to see how as we go into episode five and perhaps in the latter half of the season if we pick up or oh i don't know we have a little bit of an upbeat in pacing because i think at the moment the pacing is going in a in a direction that maybe i wouldn't be as much of a fan of if it continued so we'll see but that was episode four talk that was better call saw sunday if you're not already subscribed please do consider doing that tick that notification button as well give the video a like if you liked all that good stuff let me know what you thought of the episode did you have uh, similar musings I wonder I do wonder whether the I mean they've hired the Sean actor from The Good Place and the guy who's in Brooklyn Nine-Nine that guy in the, uh, the meeting I think also as much as I'm talking about what I where I think that's going I think as well because they've hired someone who I do recognize sometimes you know if you watch a lot of media you do kind of you pick up on whether a character is going to be a little bit more important down the line I think he's definitely coming back and I think his casting is is indicative of that as well sorry I ended the video i did i'm sorry stop talking about it but links down below if you want to support me i've got youtube memberships patreon as well three tiers uh both the same on both sites but it just depends where you prefer to be thank you genuinely to those who do support me but with that said click on this video right here to keep the good times running and other than that i'll see you soon bye